What up? Welcome to a podcast with Mo. I am Mo. This is episode two of season two. On this episode, I'm joined by Snappy and Skinny. Talk about New Year's Eve, some pot talk, bro code, Balenciaga ad, mask and MAGA hats, porn, sports, Brittany Griner trade, making lollipop drumsticks, cooking chili, video games, Skinny's case, a beat tutorial at the end. Thanks for checking us out. A podcast with Mo. Uh, what up? We're joined by Snappy. What up, what up, what up? And Skinny 5000. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so this is back for season two. If people weren't here for season one, just act like it's the Ooh. first episode. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> I mean, we also have been putting out highlight episodes from the season one, so y'all can catch up with that easily without having yeah. to listen through all of our stupid takes about Trump and all kinds <laughs> of other shit that happened early on in the podcast. Quick high, like sniffing highlighters. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't? <laughs> Highlighting love it? them side. <laughs> now, I don't want to date this too much on these early episodes, but w- literally, we're doing this uh, on New Year's Day and New Year's Eve just happened, and both y'all have families. So, did y'all do anything fun? Nope. Played games with the kids. Yeah. 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 No, y'all have like a tradition, right? That's what y'all do every year. Yeah. It was a good time. You know, spark on cider and. That's some white people shit because my baby mama did it with the art kids. <laughs> the the college kids even come back for it. They like it. That's interesting. Uh, to me, growing up New Year's Eve, uh, at the age you like start caring about it. So like church going age, I would say, because I went to like a lot of lock-ins. I went to a lot of uh, parties at people's houses, like even as like a junior high age kid or elementary where like you would stay up till midnight or whatever. And I'll never forget in sixth grade, I had a crush on Kelly Malone and she asked me to kiss her at midnight and I got real pumped. And then I found out I was like the fourth guy she asked. And I was like, no, I went back and was like, I ain't kissing you. I ain't going to be fourth pick. And then I think of that a lot <laughs> because I think this is a lot of my problem in life is I want to <laughs> be treated like a number one pick when I should just understand. I should have just took what I could get like all like, Throughout my growing up, I think I should have understood where I was at instead of being like, "No, I want to be picked." You, know, you got like fucking standards. No, nah, don't lower your yeah. standards. Fuck that. Sometimes you got to understand your role in the game. She had huge tits yeah, for like when sometimes, we were in sixth grade. Well, sometimes hey, you know, you know we I like some big around titties around here. And then I was like, <laughs> "No, I found out you asked Do and Jonathan and so and so like, and then me, no way." <laughs> and so anyway. <laughs> And then she became real religious, and so I think I dodged a bullet in hindsight. But you know, who knows? Fun times. <laughs> you could have right? changed your life. Um, Shitty times. Now, do y'all have any New Year's resolutions? So by the time this comes out, we'll probably have already f- fucked up on them. I'm not starting mine until tomorrow. No, because... man, I quit lying to myself years ago. See, <laughs> I think I can pull one off. I have more willpower nowadays than I did when I was. Younger, yes, I will right? continue to smoke pot all 2023. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I keep telling myself I need a tolerance break because I see people get like a couple hits and they're high and I'm so jealous. But I'm like, how long do I have to quit until that happens? <laughs> you know, but I don't know what the I do get jelly is. sometimes. I miss the old schoolboy high, you know, I just don't get head to high, head to toe high anymore. Like that. Right. And uh, <laughs> you know what? I think this is a perfect time for our first uh, segment. This is what we're going to call our little pot talk segment. Our pot talk. All right, pod talk segment. Um, Here we go. <laughs> y'all also hear that that beat on a song in the future, so you gotta look out for that. Um, Fantastic. I was in the dispensary yesterday, mm-hmm. and I heard some funny shit. And you work in a dispensary, Snappy, so I'm sure you're going to have a lot of things for this segment in the future. So keep notes out there, you know, uh, figure uh, for things you need to say. But this guy, no lie, he said, I need something that's 28%. Anything less or anything more won't get me high. And the person helping him was like, 
<laughs> <laughs> like they even they just went and found everything that was 28 percent or whatever and i just thought it was so funny and this dude was so certain too he's like i know if it's not 28 percent, it don't work for me and like to him I like all the pot in the world none of it works except if it tests at this one number <laughs> And I've just never, I've heard, I've seen number hunters as far as like the, the higher, the better, you know, mm-hmm. but I've never heard of as exact an, number. It needs to be an exact number. I thought that was fun. Well, first of all, you could go test the same product to a different lab and get a different result. And different uh, colas on the same plant can get you different. Results. Yes. I mean, this dude is in straight fucking denial. Right. He made this shit up all on his own. He's living in a fucking box <laughs> on his fucking. He thinks it's a Snap fucking miracle snappy. cure. And it does have medical benefits, but this motherfucker's out of his mind. Yeah, so I thought that was really fun. Um, and then I was trying to buy some shit yeah. that was like the lowest percent they had. And everybody was like, Are you sure? And I was like, Yeah, okay. My favorite thing know. on the shelf's been like 17% three months in a row, three different strains. They've all been great, delicious. Hit the checked all the boxes. Right. I so, mean, uh, very fun to see these uh, num- number hunters. What I'll do is I'll go in and look for a one to one and then put it with my favorite pot. And then I'm getting high head to toe. Right. Yeah. A lot of people don't understand the benefits of the CBD. They do not. They're like, no, CBD has been legal. And it's like, yeah, but it used to be part of the pot. Like the pot we grew up smoking had the CBD in it. That's why we couldn't fucking walk, couldn't fucking function. Right. Yeah. If you can find a good one, the one, but it's hard. It's hard to find them. Oh, yeah. Um, Or they're a lot more rare than the others. Um, And then back to our New Year's thing. I'm going to try to drink more water. I I think I can cut out all tea and soda. Starting tomorrow, I don't think that would be that hard for me. And then I'm going to try to drink alcohol, which I know isn't water. But I, We're about to do a shot on the way to play this first song, or I'm going to. Yeah. I mean, y'all are more than welcome to, of course. Yeah. And I'm going to try to just start drinking more because I think that will make me more fun. And okay. I think that's needed. <laughs> so anyway, that's uh, those are my two resolutions for the new year, both liquid based. Hell yeah. Go ahead, then. I dig it. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck. I'm right. down with it. Go good for luck, it. future me. Um, Fun mo. <laughs> all right, I think we should go ahead and play the first song. Uh, so people don't know, season two, our big difference is we're combining normal episodes and music mm-hmm. episodes. Uh, we're probably only gonna have one episode a week a unless we just get so many Patreons. Man, how do I forget about the two most important things in these podcasts? Patreon, patreon.com slash a podcast mo. Ooh, uh, you can go there and give. The new rate, the new thing, I have a new deal on there. It's $5 a month, and you will get access to our special episode. We're going to record secret episodes, one a month, and then you'll get shouted out. Uh, Now, we will start in February or March. I don't know. I actually don't want to talk to you all about this. Should we go ahead and try to make a secret one for February, or should we like give it time for people to sign up? Because I can push it back a month, the launch of the the charging Ooh, the um, so anyway february right i'm thinking february makes sense because i'm planning on getting real it's gonna be real nasty on the secret one we're gonna talk oh, damn yeah. we're gonna get real uh get <laughs> it real deep gonna... talk about some shit like i'm thinking i'm gonna do top five most embarrassing sexual moments for me Ooh, like that's very vulnerable Ooh, and I'm funny get that piercing before then. but then that will be we'll lock that off to people that are like paying money yeah. and then i've also had this idea of asking you snappy about like when you and your wife started dating because i remember the first time you told me this story it seemed very uh, something you probably wouldn't tell the full thing on a normal episode, but maybe you would on something there's like a locked in, you know, people had to pay money to listen to it so less people would hear it, you know? <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm trying nasty. to think of what I told you. Oh, shit. Right. Well, it was just a little more, uh, you, you okay. dirty little boy. Shit. But so anyway, those these are some ideas. I just don't know if we're doing it February or March. So do y'all think we would could get one, another one recorded this month before February? If so, I could say let's just fucking start in February. I'm with it. I'm sure we can do it. All right, we'll figure it out. So February first, <laughs> y'all want to join our Patreon? <laughs> Patreon.com slash podcast mo. Five dollars more a month to get access to the secret episodes. <laughs> and if we get enough patrons, we'll make more secret episodes. And then it'll be like that's really all we care about. You know, and these will be a front for the Patreon <laughs> episodes. <laughs> oh yeah. And I don't know how we're uploading them, whether to YouTube on it's like a private video or to like Patreon, I think can host audio files. So yeah, we'll figure it out. But that's some shit. And also, mm-hmm. I'm going to buy each of y'all a, mer- a, a new t-shirt. So that should come later oh, this month. So sweet. Uh, we have the season two logo on t-shirts at, I think it's a podcast. 
dot com. Yeah. So I don't know, I'll put a link to both these Sound things right. in the comments or the description of the episode. Uh, they look pretty good though. The new logo, they have some new thing on the spread shirt website where you open the logo and they're like, you want us to optimize this to look good? And you're like, yes. And now it actually, so I have a feeling it's going to print better. The new logo. We'll see, but I'm going to get okay. each one of y'all one. So y'all have that. And, uh, Represent. any listeners, of course, go check it out. Um, you, you. all right. Song music. Let's talk about it. First one we're going with here. Uh-huh. Is one that I'm on actually. It's a long ass fucking song, so this okay. should give us time to uh, take a shot and uh, shot smoke it. something. Now, this is a new friend. Uh, I think he's actually checked out the podcast. He's like, okay. "Hey, it's pretty cool." So this will be like a new friend of the podcast. His name is Lokia. Lokia, what up, new friend? He's rather in Oklahoma or Texas. I'm not. I'm not sure. One of the two. Last by. night of our recording, him and Karma were hanging out in person. With someone Ooh. else in a studio making music. So, you know, we like yeah. Lokia around here. His karma's the homie. And uh, anyway, I'm on this song of his. Now, it was originally going to be just like three verses, but then so many people sent verses. It turned on these like mega mix things, right? On these old Busta mm-hmm. Rhymes type shit. Uh, okay. So it's like six people on it. The name of the song is Bowser. First verse and last verse is Lokia. Uh, second verse is Corey. Third verse, Clayto, who I think we've played on the podcast before. And then I am uh, the fifth verse, and then Karma, and then Lokia again. So again, long song. Bowser Ooh. came out, I believe, two weeks ago by the time this comes out, something like that. So it'll be out on the cipher on the show. Y'all go check it out. Um, uh, Bowser, check it. Check it, check. Bowser, save the princess. Max, baby. Find me moving somewhere with my mouth shut. Low key, but I'm about to touch a loud pack. I don't know why they're trying to doubt us. Please don't bring your queen around me. I'm Bowser. I'm Bowser. Please don't buy the pull up on the spot, niggas. Figure I'm lawless, devilish mind still got since stab my back, but I got that tortoise shell. That mean my skin hard and play with fire, but I ain't no arsenic. My bars got these hoes hotter than ish. I used to pop back then. Hard to the swelling out with addiction. Number three track on needle, but a fall that mean I don't need that. If I go away, just know I be back. Step a step aside, we got hella pride. Go through hell and give you feedback. Tell the devil I really meant when I said I never wanna see his ass. Pull up to the spot at my
never stopping. Cooper King, I'm at the top, man. What you mean? I'm the cream of all the crops. Ain't serving fiends, I seen them flock. No more talk. All the mouths been steady, watching for the drop. Gotta keep them on their toes, giving goals all down the block. Chasing the them, taking some L's, asking them why, giving them hell. Earned a few W's, hard in the shell, but she said she been done with you, really prevail. Get what I want, we'll settle for less. In love with the pussy, blunts are getting checks. Put that blade up to your neck, hesitating, afraid to step, yeah. If I roll through once a million background, twice friends in a ring, good, another background, nice thing, thrice for you thrown in the fire, you a hoe when the lie, and I'm holding your life up, but I'm hopeful, real antisocial, I don't do, loud rooms, I'm a low-key goon, and they're gonna see someone on a minute till I want smoke, damn. Find me moving somewhere with my mouth shut, low-key, but I'm about to touch a loud pack, I don't know why they are trying to doubt us, please don't bring your queen around me, I'm bound. What y'all think this was done already? Hell no, nah, put the beat back. Yeah, you can call me Big Dude Spin Fire. Yeah, you can call me Bowser. Flow so cold, I will freeze your internet browser. You know more, always gonna be smoking flower. If you bring your home around, she gonna flood her trousers. I be on them downers, I be on them uppers. I take all the drugs around, I'm a goofy motherfucker. Shucks, all these confessions, I'm feeling like I'm usher. Gotta let it burn like fuck you's in a rubber. All these raw, every time, no plan B. Smoking something kind, you know me. Got degrees, EM pussy and THC. Don't push me, I straighten you out, leave them crease. Fishy motherfuckers flopping on release. Bitch, I'm about to put up on the spot, niggas. Praying, but I grow and grow, getting coins while they fading. You scared it is caring the best, no debating. You so far behind me, forgot we was raised. I'm throwing tracks like the shells, taking out all of my ops. Hope and wish that I fail, but no one listen whenever you drop. They see me, they stream me, you mad, they believe in me. It'll take more than some proof that ain't reaching me. Bitch, I'm bows, it ain't no defeat in me. Switch up on me, now I get tax free. You got like the wind, me and my team, we win. They know I'm a star, that's why peace will be hit. If you not be funk, that PN or low key. To the mo clay toe for Corey. TTO, them bitch, you ain't for me. I'm the antagonist, but I run the story. Yeah. They talking about me. Embrace your L like Louis G. No one comes to see. Girl ain't mad, so take several seats. I'm moving somewhere with my mouth shut. Low key, but I'm about to touch a loud pack. I don't know why they are trying to doubt us. Please don't bring your queen around me. I'm Bowser. I'm Bowser. Bitch, I'm about to put up on the spot, niggas. I stay your peach to be fruitful. I hand her off to my sis, karma, let them practice, karma suit you. Nah, I'm just playing. You gon' be feeling my pain. The minute I'm spitting these flames, you gon' know quick that this isn't a game to you. Stuck on a level, ain't nothing to gain. You can figure the flow, the settings need change. Pin to the bottom, the devil would make me. Check out my vigorous flow. Wanna be me, then you gotta be dope. Gotta lose hope. Gotta be dog and bitch out of the highest. I'm riding on fire and shot of myself. Program the will and there's in my coats. All I know does like my knees were real. Figure the feeling you Find me moving somewhere with my mouth shut. Low key, but I'm about to touch a loud touch. I don't know why they are trying to doubt it. People don't be low key, now I'm a thousand. I'm a thousand. Bitch, I'm about to pull up on the spot, niggas. Please don't be low key, now I'm a thousand. 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 Bowser. Motherfucking Bowser. Hell yeah, yeah, yeah. Motherfucking bring it back like a fucking cypher. Dig that shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was cool. I like it. Very good. Uh, Y'all go check out Lokia and all the people on the beat. Ch -ch 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 -ch
Uh, what do you think, Snappy? Motherfucker's long as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and talked about Bowser. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, um, yeah, we'll have another one that Loki has featured on on another future episode. I have about like, the first four episodes filled up on the music, which is cool. That's going to be the hardest part of all this. Let's keep the music Keep that music up. shit up. <laughs> I'm trying to record these episodes early so we can have a few ready to go, you know, without the pressure. Right. Um, but eventually it's going to be a thing. So we're going to we're going to see how we or handle it. Not. <laughs> or not. Yeah, we we'll become very popular and everyone will send us music mm-hmm. for because we're the last boom, boom, bastion boom, boom, boom. of finding new underground hip hop because <laughs> everywhere else you got to pay money to be on Spotify list and that's all there is to it. And here you can have organic listeners of our or 14 people. Organic. Saving the music planet. Okay. Smoke them if you got them. <laughs> um, all right, next on my little list to talk about. Let's talk about it. Is something random as fuck, but I feel like that's what we do here. Yeah. And it's the bro code. Ooh. And I think it's interesting because we're all bros. And looking at our numbers, as far as the highlight episodes, we are 100%, 100% male <laughs> listeners on Spotify on highlight episodes. So I ain't got to know who our audience is here. <laughs> right, you know, whip right. them out, fellas. Uh <laughs> Or non fellow you know, I don't know, however you identify. You know, um, you can do whatever you want. Um, but the bro code's a for sure real thing. Oh, yeah. Where, like, you meet a guy, just even a new guy, for the most part, you're like, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt, yeah. bro. And then, until they fuck you over. And then they're like, at least for me, they're like, enemy for life, because that's the way I am. Right, I just watched a little cartoon about that, like a little kid's cartoon, because this little kid's like, dude meets the other parent at the park, and the kid was like, are y'all friends yet? And he's like, I just met him. We'll see what happens. <laughs> right. It just happens like that. Hell yeah. Yeah. I mean, and we were all in a fraternity, which <laughs> I think will, I've listed on a future episode, we got to get in the skinnies fraternity memories. So I don't think we've ever went over any of those. We've only went over mine and yours. So I think that'll be fun. But we're all in a fraternity and there's certain, you definitely get clicks immediately. We're like, I don't like that douchebag and I like this guy. And like that shit happens or whatever. Sure. Um, but in general, like the bro code's a real thing. And Some then, motherfuckers facially annoy you. Yeah, that's true. They just, <laughs> as soon as you see them, I mean, always there, you know. God damn, you fucking got them fucking high gums. God damn. Yeah. You're hard to look at. You're fucking missing three teeth. Some bitch, I can't look at you in the eyes. I mean, right. Yeah. God damn, you got a fucking big nose. I mean, God. Right. Well, I ain't it's petty bullshit, but even like thinking back to like high school or college or you know, whatever, you would just lie for your friend. Like, girl calls, where's my boyfriend? You're like, he was with me. Like, you would just lie immediately. <laughs> if you're like your homie, right? Like, and there's no. Yeah. And you're like, that's the right call. Like, in your mind, you're like, and that was right because he cheated, <laughs> but I lied for him because he's my bro. And you're like, totally fine with that, you know? Even I would say, like, uh, and like it's kind of the way it works. I think it's a perfect example. Koopy and Pow Wow are actually friends. That's my wife and Pow Wow are actually friends. If me and Pow Wow went out somewhere and I did something like I cheated on Koopy, he would tell on me because Broco doesn't go that far because he's friends with her. But I'm not really friends with Jill. Like me and Jill, who's Pow Wow's wife, we don't really like, we're not <laughs> friends like that. And I would never tell on Pow Wow in a million years. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Does that make sense? <laughs> okay, yeah, it does. So, I just think it's interesting the way some how it all works, and like we all kind of just instinctually know it in a way. And I've also thought like everyone's like there's an alpha male or whatever, and I'm just again maybe thinking fraternity wise, but it's like hardly ever that. There's ever there's rarely one guy who's always like the shit. It's like in different scenarios, right. different guys are the shit. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's never like one guy's always the shit. So I always think we were like, I'm the alpha male always, which I go down these rabbit holes on TikTok where there are these guys that live in like fucking trailers with two girlfriends that have five teeth among them. <laughs> and they're like, I'm the alpha male around here. And they're like, yeah, daddy. And I'm like, oh, my, I just get obsessed with this shit. So <laughs> maybe that's where my mind's been going these days. But yeah. <laughs> Someday when we get video. I'll be able to share the TikTok videos I love. You know, I bet okay. this room's still a mess, but I did recently just purchase a $300 metal storage cabinet. That's Ooh, a lot of money. Right just there. so I can move this shit out of this room and put in that so that maybe someday we can get a better setup in this Ooh, podcast room. So a dollar anyway. at a time. We'll make it a shine. Patreon, y'all don't forget. Um, bro code. So it was also a decent show on VH1. You know, back mm-hmm. in the day, it wasn't the worst. It wasn't the worst show. That was like there at the very end of uh, VH1 and MTV's life cycle before Satellite died. Like, 
Oh, yeah. I know we mentioned it was New Year's <laughs> Eve earlier. Last night we were watching before the ball drop or whatever. There's like take your blood pressure devices on before the ball drop. Like network TV has fallen so far off. That used to be like prime time. You get all the money in the world for those commercials before that shit because everybody was watching. Like there was the weakest commercials last night. I was like, Oh, no one's watching TV. Uh-uh. Not like they used to. We like, turned it on like the last 10 minutes, maybe, like just right. to see. Yeah, that's what we did. I, we Something I ended, <laughs> and we were like, oh, yeah, I guess it's 20 minutes still. We'll throw it over or whatever. But anyway, just interesting. Uh, next song, so we don't get off track here. I got to remember to play this shit. Um, is going to be from uh, someone we haven't played Maybe we have. I don't know. Anyway, the homie Spider Deuce. Well, yeah, we've played Spider Deuce. Yeah, we've played him before, but I don't know how long it's been. I guess I was trying to remember bit. when. Yeah, it's not. It's been a while. So Spider Deuce. He's uh, back on the deucing. Uh, he is a native rapper out of, I think, California, I believe. California. I could be wrong on California, but I know he's native. I know that much. Yeah. Um, and it's the name right. of this song is Missing Pieces. Where are they? I was drinking like I was underwater and I ran out of air. Yeah. Had 99 problems with the bottle, caused another one I didn't even care. Woke up a couple times, they said I did a couple things I didn't even think I did. A couple of times I was twisted, hopped in the whip and dipped while I was sipping. Swear. I was on another level. Full speed with my eyes closed, I was dancing with the devil. I was digging with a shovel. I was seeing double. I was in trouble. I wasn't doing nothing subtle. Thought I was popping like a bubble. I was flexing my muscle. Didn't even have a duffel. Missing pieces to the puzzle. I was trying to feel good. What's that? Let me get a cigarette. Let me take a sip of that. That's real good. Got the homie in the cut, rolling up in the back with a bag in a in a backwood. They said I'ma die if I keep drinking. I don't stop, and I don't know why. I guess it's that good. I keep seeing signs, I don't listen, I go hard They tell me to stop, I wish that I could It was popping off when I was drinking Swigging. I don't even know what I was thinking Tripping. Was it me or was it demons? I was doing things I shouldn't I didn't even have a reason Have you ever woke up bleeding? Nah. Did you know that you could drown in the shallow part? It don't gotta be the deep end, that depends on who is sinking Let that sink it for a little, then let me know what you thinking I was drinking like I was underwater and I ran out of air Yeah had 99 problems with the bottle, caused another one I didn't even care Woke up a couple times, they said I did a couple things I didn't even think I did A couple of times I was twisted, hopped in the whip and dipped while I was sipping Swear. I was on another level, full speed with my eyes closed I was dancing with the devil, I was digging with a shovel I was seeing double, I was in trouble I wasn't doing nothing subtle, thought I was popping like a bubble I was flexing my muscle didn't even have a duffel Missing pieces to the puzzle I was on a bad route Felt like I was gonna crash out I ain't about to throw a bitch I'm about to pass out I'm not myself Shit, I think I just blacked out Can you tell me what that's all about? I wrecked cars Lost patience Took shit too far Got locked up behind bars Looked up, there's no stars Just a concrete ceiling Some fucked up feelings Gotta get out and give me a million So I can make me a killing Spider Deuce. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very fucking nice. I like that shit. Nice Wait. little flow. Like, fuck yeah. Missing pieces. Got all the pieces right there. Those right pieces on it. Uh, yeah, I always like sad shit. Um, so that was a little more on the sad side. So, works for me. I liked yeah. it. I thought it had a nice little smooth beat to it. Smooth. Yeah. Very, very cool. Yes. So y'all go check him out. Chick, 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 chick. And, um... I think it's on, you know, Spotify, all the other places. All them fucking Wherever y'all fucking stream music. Well, just look all them up. platforms. Uh, filter fell out. Yeah. That's cool. I got it. I play as this happens, it happens to me all the time, and I get I do get pissed. Don't get me wrong. But you can figure it out. Um, all right. Next on my little list here is how much y'all know about this Balenciaga bullshit? Ooh. I know about Balenciaga. What was about the bullshit about it? Okay. So 
in the middle of all the crazy Kanye shit, which is on my big list of we'll have to cover it a bit. We had to cover everything that happened while we were gone, and there was a lot that happened. But one of those things, the Balenciaga ad. So there was this ad, Balenciaga, if you don't know, it's a clothing company. It's owned by some Hi. fucking dude Hi, that uh, owns a bunch of high-end shit like that. But... Uh, yeah, they have this ad where it has like little teddy bears. And I went and looked them up a couple days ago because I was like, I got to get more information. Because I, I kind of know, but I didn't really know, you know. Um, but there was these three-year-olds, so that's what I would guess their age. And they're holding teddy bears, and the teddy bears are wearing BDSM outfits. And then there's like all these uh, papers on a desk and like uh, briefcases and all this shit like that. I'm like, I don't know, they're in a very adult situation, right? And then uh, those court documents on the counter our court documents from something that's about this virtual child porn case. So it's like literally about child pornography right there in everyone's eyes or whatever. Yeah. And uh, no one's talking. I mean, Kanye was like, oh, y'all know it's no celebrity saying shit. And then the next day, Kim was like, of course, I stand against this. Blah, blah. You know, but it was like, I don't know. It was interesting that no one said anything or cared. You know, I've mentioned on the first episode of this podcast on our coming back, because it's actually episode two. I kind of <laughs> forgot it earlier. That like somehow being against pedophilia has made you a right winger. Like if you're like, hey, I don't think people should fuck kids. People are like, you're conservative. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like what yeah, the fuck's happened? Weird. It's weird, right? What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> So the only person I see kind of sit up against it is there is this guy who was on Big Brother, who's one of my all time favorite shows uh, and named Jeff something. I don't remember. He was he had this little romance with this lady and they, you know, were very popular. But he's kind of used that to gone into a, become a news anchor on some fucking thing. I don't know what it was on, but he was on some news show and he kind of rips his ear brought off and he was like ranting against it. Like, this is bullshit. No one's saying shit. And he was like, and like 100 people would have had to see that ad before it ever got to print. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's not like just one rogue because that's like that like one rogue fucking photographer did this or some shit. And it's like, no, that's not how any of this works. And everyone knows it, you know, so damn, it's just I don't know. And then so anyway, then you have like whenever the crazy right wingers, I agree the QAnon people are crazy. I hate that I have to keep saying it, but I do think they're kind of crazy. But then when they're like, hey, all these people are pedophiles and then some pedophile shit happens. And then all of a sudden, like none of the celebrity people are like. You know, we're boycotting Balenciaga. You're like, wait a minute. Maybe the crazy people have some shit right, you know? I don't know. Everybody's it, right in their own way. <laughs> it's interesting. It's just interesting. So, of course, we got to keep covering uh, any conspiracy theories on here because that's the key to podcasting. <laughs> uh, and also, I don't, I think we got to... I have to look into that Wayfair shit. Remember when COVID first happened there was all that Wayfair shit? Y'all remember that at all? What is Wayfair? Wayfair yeah, is, is like, a company that says fucking furniture. Yeah. Right? And so if you Googled, okay. like, so if you went on Wayfair and you looked up certain fucking closets or whatever, and then you looked at the little IBN number or whatever the fuck it was, and you put that in a Google image search, it would pull up, like, pictures of little kids, of, like, certain kids. So it was supposed to be, like, you're ordering kids. And these, oh, yeah, these closets would be, like, $35,000 for something that should have been, like, $1,000. And so, and they'd be like super marked up. So they thought they were basically like, you buy a closet with a kid inside if you bought these certain ones. So like that was the whole Wayfair shit. And so you know, it's like, maybe, <laughs> maybe they fucking, maybe they were. I don't fucking know, you know, but on this shit. <laughs> it's, uh, it's just always interesting how, I don't know. And maybe it's just the conspiracy theorist in me. I want, I want it to be fun. You know, I don't believe in religion. So therefore, I want to believe in, the evil in the world and you're like oh this is yeah, pretty interesting in or whatever there's no know? doubt about it there's evil in the world yeah there's not no that's there <laughs> so there's it's no fun <laughs> fun shit you know what i think we gotta play a song for my homies no, bradster right. x oh with the evil shit <laughs> bitch see motherfuckers uh now i haven't listened to this song yet he just sent it to me so it might have coop as well i think it does but i don't know uh it's from their new album or ep called seasonal depression that is produced Ooh. by me and uh the name of this song is club shit Ooh. Hmm, last dance mm. Club shit, no. Nope. There's some signature boys and roll a dub shit. Yeah. Call up some bitches and get sucked. Anybody not rolling with us can get fucked. We've been drinking 
since you were in school Learning Lincoln, no club, ruling blood after blood without thinking, bitch So many hoes in my home like I'm pimping No ID, no high knee, I ain't Clinton Bitch, I'm back and I'm getting greedy Your bitch a snack, mine's a meal like sweetie, keep it real yeah. Ain't no underlying meaning, undervalued to the core Haven't hit our price ceiling, never mind how I'm feeling We're having a good time, yeah This is where you put a good rhyme but I'm high and I'm vibing at home though Keep my circle small like I live in a snow globe ha! This ain't some club shit This some let's get drunk and do some fucking dumb shit Hit us up cause you know we fucking run shit Fuck a club, rule a dub, we number one bitch Number one bitch In your mom bitch I'm gonna come bitch Fuck a club bitch yeah. Cool clubs for me, rather be Sitting in the basement, cost is free when it's only me making faces Most people call me tasteless, too old to be out shaking Breaking me a hip if I dip shit, I'm a caveman Give it to me, layman's not one for slang or changes Take it easy, back to basics, have my credit score amazing No need for the latest, already know that I'm the greatest Get the beer by the cases, chain smoking on a daily Calling up some ladies, can't promise brother safety Not a thug, we take drugs on rugs at random places Music have the roof shaking, tuning from your Zoom station Women in the mood And everything's been good When we in the booth, boom, baby Hit the ball like Tiger Woods Ain't no coop feeling when the group's hailing No rules and we too cool to school Your bulls with poor merits Fuck a club, bitch Fuck a club, bitch I'm gonna come, bitch uh. <laughs> that was Brad Sirax coming. Yeah. yeah. Coop humming. Shoot, Coop was tearing it up. Damn, Coop did his thing on that one. Like, fuck yeah. Try it. Be like, damn, Coop. Shout out Coop. Like, fuck yeah. I, I dig that. So like I said, that is on their new project, Seasonal Depression. Go check yeah, that yeah, out. Yeah. Trying to get on their sad Fire. shit. See, I send, uh, there's three people I send a bunch of beats to, and they are one of those three. And, um, I see them some they're like I don't know if these are really y'all shit but here you go and so I think they turn some of those in the seasonal depression shit or whatever but we'll see he has uh he's used about half the beats I've sent him so far from when I looked up last well anyways he said he uh he sent us a hard copy of the uh his album uh the last ride in the uh, mail for Christmas you're right I have it in my hand here oh, still so in cellophane sweet. The sweet of you. So y'all can also go check out The Last Ride, which is full of Snappy all over it. He's all in a bunch of skits. <laughs> snap, snap. Hopefully They're we great. get uh, Snappy and Brad and some skits on this podcast in the future. We That is in the works, but I don't want to put too much pressure on him, of course, on Brad. Um, but it could happen. Could happen. Ooh, um, another great episode. So y'all go check out all... Brad puts out a lot of shit, a lot of projects, you know, so y'all just go follow Brad Surex on your favorite always streaming in the site. working. Um. All right. Next on our little list, we got a lot of shit to be honest. But yeah, a lot of it. Um, something that's really, you know, this is just a, again random political shit because why not? <laughs> uh, is that masks have become their liberal MAGA hats? You know what I mean? Like <laughs> the way if you see someone right now wearing a "Make America Great Again" hat, you're like, are you fucking serious, bro? Like, yeah, I mean, that would be your th- at least my thought, right? If I saw me Walmart. With yeah. a MAGA hat, I'd be like, this motherfucker won't let it go. And then if I like see a peep, if I see someone in Walmart that's under the age of like 70 or say whatever, you know, I get old people. They're scared. I get it. But if there's a young person wearing a fucking mask in Walmart right now, I'm like, what? And again, people out there like in y'all's fucking coastal cities are like, we have to. But guess what? We haven't have to in like two years, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time since we've had to wear a mask. And uh so people are still going on their way to do it. Yeah, but you see about one out of a fifteen hundred. Right. Every once in a while you'll see someone. <laughs> and to me, they're just the liberal version of that person wearing the MAGA hat. Yeah, well that there's like but you in the hospitals like everybody's got one on and shit. Yeah, well, I think you have to there. Like, I think there's literally signs on the door that says you have to wear a mask. I know last time I went well, to the doctor, like, I had well, to. Well, I went to the VA hospital like a couple weeks ago. And, like, is it like your choice? I was walking around the bitch without one. Like, majority of people have one on. <laughs> yeah, right. certain jobs are still requiring it. You're right. What the fuck is For going sure. on? And maybe I'm just turning into a conservative, you know, in my old age. Maybe I'm just like, you know what? I kind of get it. You see the dumb shit, and it's usually a liberal doing it. Sorry. Well, no, I'm just playing. <laughs> I mean, we have a couple of years out, but like all these studies are coming out now where it's like, by the way, this, 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 and this. And it's things that a lot of the 
conspiracy theorists were saying years ago and then the people they just announced it like it's nothing and then the people that were like preaching at you for the last two years you better do all this shit like something that really sticks out to me is we had some friends both of fraternity where one was yelling at the other one of like you have to wear a mask because of the spittle and they kept saying the word spittle over and over and i remember at the beginning that is what they believe they believed the virus traveled on the spittle but since then they're like no spittle it all is in air you're right it's a whole air thing there is no on counters that's not a thing but that, that that guy's never went back and like, hey, by the way, bro, I was totally wrong. You know, and of course he didn't. But that interaction still happened. No one apologizes about their spittle. Ask right. any woman. It's a, <laughs> so it's just interesting that it's like they still are probably mad about that thing. And that guy probably still thinks he's right. Yeah. Because he's never went back to look. But like since then, it turns out the other guy was right. You know, so. I don't know. It's just, uh, I think it just divided everyone. Like, I look at my friends list on Facebook and so many people just unfriended me. And I don't even think I shared that crazy as shit. I just share a meme here and there. But, uh, oh yeah, during like the whole like Trump divide is what we'll call it. Right. Yeah. It's, there was a before and after Trump for sure. I meant, well, yo. <laughs> and then, I, and I've got to say, these, uh, symbols aren't new. Confederate flags are things that good old boys wear to kind of identify themselves to other good old boys. Mm-hmm. Peace signs and, uh, you know, what tie dyes a way for hippies and potheads yeah. to let them know that, yeah. like, hey, if you want to smoke, I'm down to smoke. I mean, like, there's uh-huh. always been ways to know. I, I think something about wearing a 50 down 50 fitted hat is to let black people know I'm cool. Like, not, like, I don't think that, like, when I buy them, but I do think there's some subconscious yeah, thing see, going on. You got some swagger. I see that. See that, that flag on you? I say, yeah. It's a little hip-hop to it, yeah. Right. And, again, I could be wrong. And I used to only wear my hats backwards and almost never do anymore. So, I mean, it's even changed. But, I st- like, I, I debated buying a snapback recently because I was looking them up. All the cool designs are snapbacks now. And I'm like, What? This is horse shit. It's always but, been the coolest design. No, no, not those top. Those are short. They have them like mine, like deep as fuck, but snapbacks. Yeah. And oh, I'm like, that, I didn't even know that existed. A, this is a snapback like that. Is it? Yeah, it's a snapback. Oh, well, see, yeah, I'm like, maybe I should look into the deep as fuck snapbacks because once I saw some designs, like, they're right. way cooler. They, they got a lot of cool. Like, all the ones, like, I enjoy are starting to look old manish because they're like, we're going to put a big old cursive thing on this. I'm like, what? What are y'all right. doing? What are y'all doing? <laughs> yeah, so, all the all the fitted ones. I gotta wear an eight in that bitch. <laughs> like, oh, because your dreads. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Um, all right. Another thing I need to bring up here before we do a song, and something I've thought about a lot since we've quit this podcast. And I know it's gonna sound awkward when you hear what it is, but it came up in a conversation with me and Brad in our little group chat on Twitter. And I was like, you know what? It's a perfect thing to do on the podcast. But do you remember on Tiger King? Uh, I don't know if y'all watched Tiger King or not. Oh, yeah, I'm sure y'all did. It was voice. great. Um, he says basically, like a way he convinces these straight men that they're a little gay is he's like, well, when you watch porn, you want to see the bigger dick, right? Or like, that's more or less his thing. He saw it off a comedian. A comedian started Okay, that. a comedian started that. Right. So that's, a, I guess, a popular thing people say. And so this porn came up in our little group chat with me and Brad because, you know, it's, it gets crazy in there. And uh, I was like, to be honest, that isn't what for me when I watch porn, I do not look for the biggest penis. That is not what attracts me. If anything, I think it's more of which one looks like mine, like which one is the closest to mine is the one I'm more interested in. I'm, I'm not watching the, the penis just, at all. I'm or, just a freak. I like the that's just whatever vibe I'm into. I was like, I'm a variety person. <laughs> right. <laughs> I can say, and honestly, I think even better, I prefer when they're I mean. smaller than I am. Because then it's like, oh yeah, with that, I mean, oh, your imagination, I think, goes even to more places. Yeah, I just, I just think, yeah she's just thinking all that bullshit. <laughs> and that's true. That's she's true. like, fuck all that. That's Get why that I, I don't here. understand that the guys that are like follow certain porn stars. Because I mean, I just like, I just say known for that one video. You know, you don't need to know all the other appearances <laughs> and all the other videos. But, um, but anyway, some guys are really into like, they want to see someone very large, right? Kind of like cuck holding is very popular these days. I think it's like my generation or maybe ours younger. It's like yeah. way ballooning up, you know, where it's like guys want to see their girlfriend have sex with other dudes. 
And like, that's just part of their <laughs> thing. That's like what they're into. And I, because of my generation, I'm like, I, how are you not like mad? You yeah, know, all that shit. <laughs> it's not much competition either. I mean, these kids are different. They're weird. They're weird people. It's <laughs> kind of like incels. Some, I brought up incels the other day. I think it was Scoop. Someone didn't know what it was. And I was like, oh, you never heard of this term incels or whatever. And it's very, it's like a lot of people just don't have, like, there's more virgins under the age of 21 than ever. You know, like than our generation or all the other, because like people just aren't having sex like they used to. And the ones that are, it's like only the top 15% of guys are having sex with all the girls because the way that the dating apps work, the way the girls can all like, we all like this guy. And he'll be like, all right, well, I'll just have sex with all of them. And then like the guys that used to be able to like get some of the leftovers or whatever, they're just not because those girls aren't swapping on them, you know? So, so it's interesting. It's interesting the way the world's all changing, but anyway. Hey, we're getting <laughs> social media blocks, Kenny. Sure. Hey. Yeah, I'm about to, go to get on the dating sites then. And then also, <laughs> speaking of the gay stuff and the penises and all the things, I mean, before we start here, you were saying, you were basically alluding to you would prefer porn that has no penises. You would prefer all girl. I did say I don't. I say I Ooh, don't like paying attention on? to the penis. I like watch no, no, the before girls. Before we recorded this podcast, you were saying oh, I can watch some all girls. I mean, like, right. I don't sit there like, oh See, man. I do think no. I think there's levels for sure. So, oh, before the podcast, I was like, every movie you watch now, there's a dude on dude scene. They're shoving it in every single Netflix movie. Well, so like. like Every single one. The way I'm fairly confident that I'm not gay, because I think anyone could be and you never know or whatever, but I'm pretty confident, is because of all the times like you're on whatever website, there is just a button there to watch all the gay shit. Right? You just click that little button and then all the gay shit pops up. And anytime that's accidentally happened or whatever, I'm like, ugh, you know, it's it's not and not judging. Try not to judge because I Mm -hmm. think everyone's in their own thing. But I think people know these days if they're gay, whereas the people used to not. Because they just know if they watch gay porn. If you watch gay porn, you're gay or whatever. I don't know. Maybe that's me being wrong. But I'm assuming I that's I've been in sports, man. Like you've been, I've been around so many gay dudes. I've been around I've been so many around dudes. Right, like, but those dudes, like growing up, for instance, there are people like they didn't know or whatever. But porn wasn't as prevalent. Whereas I think today, a 16 year old's like, I don't know. He just clicks that and watches it, and he's like, Yeah, I'm into that. Just the same way when I was that I was age, like, I watched some straight shit, and I was like, Yeah. Seems pretty sweet. I like, like my son, like screenshot and shit. Right, like, you told videos. Me, I don't want to get. I mean, sure. I think like, yeah. he, he was on Spotify and he found playlists of people moaning, sex moan playlists. Yeah, I was like, how the fuck? I didn't even know that he exists. I was like, go ahead, son. Yeah, I kicked off of it, but hell, go ahead. I was like, so, yeah. These kids today, Screen, screenshot and ass shots, nah. on YouTube videos. Like, good job, son. Anyway, he, he's an ass man. <laughs> let us know right in or if you have music a podcast mo gmail.com or right in let us know what dick size you prefer in your pornography <laughs> um we're here to we'll fill the questions of course Ooh, <laughs> um all right next song we're gonna play i think this one fits perfect our homie sir nasty <laughs> sir motherfucking nasty <laughs> you nasty um, motherfucker you yeah and um this one is produced by me um I think so at the end of these podcast episodes, by the way, I'm doing these little beat tutorials. This might be one I do eventually because it's that crazy. I sent him this beat thinking there's no way he'll do this. And then when he called in for episode 399 of season one, he was like, yeah, I'm working on it right now. Watch and, I was this, like, oh, he shit. Said. <laughs> and so um, this Fuck is yeah. sampling a Glenn Campbell song called maybe go away. I don't know what the fucking name of the song is, but the name of this song is go away by Sir Nasty. OK, OK, so check it out. Let's check. Go away, come again another day. My shit very authentic, I lit Mary. Horror music, prom night, I'm with Carrie. You get carried to the grave, you get buried. My shit scary, Pyrenees and mixed berries. Mixtape killer, my semen is cream sherry. What, what happened to Cuzzle? These hoes ain't seen Terry. You talking about niggas who legendary. You niggas need to get used to being secondary. No second chances, married bitches taking their chances. When they see me, they making advances. Slut 
bitch Big balls, big dog to a mutt bitch No calls, mean you didn't make the cut, bitch They wanna fuck, so I'm all in they truck Nothing can stop me, they know my dick is all the way up <laughs> Nash, Niggas know when the truth hurt This is new birth, I created new earth My daddy can rock My daddy can rock If you motherfucking rappers would just go away <laughs> hey yo, my door be dropping every Friday the 13th, man. It's the consistency for me. What up, Unc? I love my dude Kurt. My OG fans, they love they do work. My OG niggas, they love to do work. Niggas out here banging that red and blue turf. Cuz cut his dress, that's work to suit surf. And if cuz want him dead, put heads on new shirts. Never hide, we ride in blue perk. Dirty South, baby, I give you some new dirt. Leaning back, shooting on rappers like new dirt. Told Bishop, take this money and buy you a new church. She couldn't forgive a dude, she said she too hurt. Fuck the nigga, had a baby, and dude went berserk. That nigga took a four hour drive. That's the last time anyone saw that boy alive. My God. They following the story nationwide. Three people dead, yeah, murder, suicide. So gather round, my people. Listen up. You either with us or you against us. This shit ain't for the weak, nigga. Hell no. Time is money, I hate to waste time Bitches want a nigga with coke, come taste mine Your bitch give me head, I show it on FaceTime You know it's red rum if I have to FaceTime I told Megan I am Jason, my lady And I rock it on their ass like I'm Tracy McGrady Kidnapped with a 380, bitch, I'm taking your baby Proud mama, proud daddy, my baby is in the Navy Come on. Don't play me, don't pay me, it ain't gravy Second generation of killers, we from the 80s Coffee in the cup in the morning, mix it with babies I was on Bailey, playing my ukulele Pyrenees vodka with the sweet and sour daily Drinking and smoking daily, bitch, I was living crazy AK-47, now bitch is saying I'm crazy She didn't wanna get on top of call, the bitch lazy <laughs> It's Jason Gang, and we gang forever my daddy can rock. My daddy can rock. Uh, sir nasty sir motherfucking nasty rat a tat tat that motherfucker was spitting god damn okay hot mic and that's on his <laughs> new album jason gang came out gang, january gang. 13th Ooh, so y'all that's a go friday <laughs> check that out um apparently i have a lot of beats on that um, so I'm excited to hear it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've already heard it, of course, because it's already out. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> um, I'm still excited. <laughs> but yeah, I really, I went into a phase, Skinny will remember, where I was doing lots of vinyl sampling. Yep. And, um, you know, that was one I really liked. I'm glad he pulled it off. <laughs> I did something with it. Um, very, very cool. It's fucking dope for sure. Hell yeah. Um, all mm-hmm. right. Something I feel like I got to do in some of these earlier episodes, because we do talk about so many conspiracy theory stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like you got to go to some of the classics, some of the Ooh. early shit, if you will, the things all everything's based on so that you Ooh. know. Now, this isn't like in the beginning, the fucking <laughs> books of Zion or whatever the fuck the original Ooh. Jewish shit is. But I, don't, I didn't go that far back. Mount Zion. Um, <laughs> but Project Paperclip is something that. 100% happen everyone knows it happened uh, and then I think it's what a lot of things get based on or built upon later on and then a lot of people just don't even know what Project Paperclip is you know I come across plenty of people like what the fuck are you talking about so I'm going to explain it a little bit so people know you don't know so okay. after World War II uh, we went and took all the German scientists because they were the smartest fucking scientists in the world because they had been inhumanely experimenting on people and had all the resources in the world to do all these science experiments 
uh, so like we just wanted that knowledge. I mean, we as in like the Western world or whatever. And so Russia and America and probably England as well, but I'm not positive on that, but I'm guessing so. They just split up all of the Nazi scientists and then they just got to become, said they got pardoned. And like the guy that started NASA was a Nazi. I mean, he just was a Nazi scientist that came to America. He knew how to make fucking rockets. That's why our rockets are just big missiles that launch people into space. I mean, if you've noticed, they're not anything special. They're the exact, there's a big missile. And it's because of that guy. And then, so basically the Nazis went to Russia and they went to America and they did the Cold War where there was Nazi versus Nazi scientists over who could win the space race and shit like that. You know, so mm-hmm. for people now to be like, they're all pulling the wool over. It's all the Nazis, man. Like there is some truth to that. If you believe that they established once those Nazis went in and came into these uh, organizations, established some sort of Nazi system or hierarchy or something. I don't fucking yeah, know. You know but, not, there's a lot of Nazi ties to a lot of stuff. Right. Yeah. It's that's starting to come to realize this shit like Adidas and Puma. Right, they were they were, they were started by brothers, and they were in Germany. I mean, so there were Nazis. I mean, like it wasn't. Right. I mean, it'd be like if someday Republicans became evil, and people was like, "So and so is a Republican." It's like, yeah, half of the people were, that <laughs> half of them are. What are you talking? About? You know, so I can't. I don't think you can say every Nazi is evil, but then again, a lot of people do. Right now, they'll still trust motherfuckers if they're. I just saw a thing where this woman was a secretary, and they fuck. She's like a hundred years old, and they put her in prison because she was a Nazi secretary. And it's like, what was she supposed to do? Not work. I don't know. I don't know. I just think we can get kind of. Well, I thought she would have died if she didn't follow orders, and I'm pretty sure that's the way old Hitler was. Yeah. So anyway, it's interesting <laughs> the way we look uh, back on some stuff. But Project Paperclip is very, very. Uh, you know, for a while people were like, "No, that didn't happen." But then the, all the documents are released. You're like, "Oh yeah, that that totally happened." You know. So, mm-hmm. um, I don't know. I don't think. There's other part I want to get more in the future, but FDR created like this whole shadow government that apparently has been running the U.S. since. So I think that's the real conspiracy. I need to look a little more into it before I say on the podcast, but that's really what's probably making our <laughs> world so corrupt. So, y'all yes, go like you said, that. just bring up the word pedophile. I don't want to talk about it. They'll, they'll shut down. It's weird, right? Like, I remember this kind of started uh, when Netflix had that one fucking show that had like the little kids were being sexualized or something. And mm-hmm. uh, people were like, it's a French director and it's his art. And you were like, what? <laughs> like, you're defending, like, it was so weird. Like, the left just immediately they were defending this thing. And I was like, huh. So- they would have been all over the right to us. Right. And <clears throat> they would have had charges filed. Well, what it used to kind of be was like, people would be like, the left would be like, you the right are grooming kids because you're always pushing on like who's your little boyfriend who's your girlfriend you know you're always trying to push little kids into relationships y'all are fucking gross that used to be like the left's kind of take on the right i in some way but now it's been like let's push the gay and the gay stuff on them to match the straight being pushed when i'm like i don't think you should be pushing sex on any of the kids right like we should just take it all away like instead of like matching it with like let's show them all of the options how about they don't see any of the show options them how to balance a checkbook <laughs> fill out an application fill out a doctor's form <laughs> we'll show them life skills well the, the how, doctor form's gonna ask about gender and then it's gonna turn into a whole oh thing, my god so. here we um, go <laughs> um i'll set this one out all right. <laughs> uh, one thing, I'm going to play a little segment. We got a little sports segment. We didn't get anything necessarily prepared. My goal is in the future, Snap, you'll have some prepared th- idea. But we got a couple sports topics. So let's play our sports jingle. Yo, let's play it then. Jingle, jingle. Tom, what's snapping in sports? All right, sports segment. What's <laughs> <It's> snapping in? <laughs> Man, well, TCU and Georgia will be in the uh, college uh, finals. In the natty? Yeah, I saw where, I mean, when it was happening, of course, they, all this will be done by the time this comes out, but I saw where it was like, TCU is destroying them, and all of a sudden it was like, oh, shit, it's not. Nice. It 51-45, I think it was, a, just, it was a good day of football yesterday. Yeah, I thought oh, Ohio was going to pull it off. <laughs> it was like, damn, it's like, nope. <laughs> well, Ohio State should have probably should have won that game against Georgia, but it didn't happen. Right. Pele died at 82 years old. You know, the only uh, three-time World Cup soccer champion. Brazilian. Well, my Brazilian. two things I have, the Brittany Griner train. <laughs> you know, that's sports related. No, oh, yeah. So people that don't know, and I'm sure y'all do, it's very interesting because oh, yeah. Brittany Griner was uh, arrested in Russia for having a vape pen, apparently only a couple drops in it. You know, it's something that I think should have woke the nation up to like, why is weed illegal? 
Mm-hmm. Why is it illegal across the world? Maybe we should fight this. But no, they were like racist. Russians mm-hmm. hate America. And I'm like, OK. And then so she was in jail for a long time and everyone felt really bad about it. Right. And everyone wanted to come home. And then the way they did it was like literally the one way to make people not happy about it. Right. <laughs> it was like out of all the ways you could have brought her home. You were like, let's trade an arms dealer that literally the Nicolas Cage movie Warlord or Dogs death. of War, whatever it is, <laughs> is based on. Yeah, it's like, and then now people aren't even happy. Like, even people that were like off work on home, they're like, well, yeah, you probably shouldn't have traded that. And well, so it's like, they she's in a lose-lose for well, sure. Well, just lucky you got, a, you got a minority LGBT that you traded for an arms dealer. Those two policies, they go at each other constantly because right. the left is against guns and you know, obviously the right's against whatever. Right. I guess people being happy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, not to talk too much shit. But um, yeah, so it was just an interesting trade how it's like, it was almost like on purpose bad. It and was. Like, you it know was. what I mean? Like, I don't know. It makes yeah, you wonder. I mean, his decisions, like to pardon the people that already served their terms or, <laughs> or they already did their time and shit. Like, what I think all the weed <laughs> charges should be vacated in America. Right. And well, what I think the issue is, is a lot of times the weed charges, they get paired with something else. So even if you take off their weed charge, it'll be like distribution. You're like, well, they we're distributing weed. That will be <laughs> no, another right. reason to call all the fucking prosecutors out for quit trumping up all these charges. Right. Well, and prosecutors are getting caught more and more for withholding evidence and shit like that. It's so stupid. Uh, our whole system's broke. And if, you know, out, if you're listed out there and you're going to commit crimes, if everyone just quit taking plea deals, 100%. Like if no one plead out and they said, I'll go to court. If every single person... Our court system couldn't handle it because there's so many people in the system and it would come to a halt and then something would have to do like, so there is a way to kind of protest that you go, all right, send me to court. I deserve a trial. But so many people get scared in the moment mm-hmm. and they're like, all right, I'll sign it for six month probation. Right I'm afraid I wouldn't get like the YSL case right now. Everybody's oh. taking play deals right now. I'm glad <laughs> you had that. I have that adventure to come up. How six nine was a rat, but all of a sudden these other fuckers are oh. smart. I don't like that. I don't Ooh, like this really. shit. They're all, they're just telling their they're ass. They're telling on everybody. Yeah. And there's a couple of them that said, no, we're doing take it. They're off set. Well, here you go. You, well, you know, you'll be facing 50 years. They're so, there's so much coaxing going on by the judges. Like, I like, I don't know. I can't tell you what to do, but this is like, might be your best. Interest. Like, Shut the fuck up. <laughs> and my other thing I saw in sports, Tom Brady kissing all over his son. All right. And I think this is weird as fuck. Now, I don't know if y'all seen these pictures. I wouldn't recommend it. It's gross. And by the time this comes out, maybe it's blown over or whatever, but no, and no brown my dad there. didn't kiss on me. You know, we might get a hug every now and then. And me and my dad don't even really hug. We like kind of shake hands. We're fucking men about it. But I don't know. His son looks like 11 or 10. So maybe I'm wrong because y'all have kids this age. They're uh, about, look about y'all's age, right? Right, okay. Do y'all, like, would your kids sit on your lap and you, like, hug them and kiss on their neck and stuff? I don't know, kiss on their neck. I'll give, give him a kiss on the top of his head or on his cheek or something. Give him top a of the head like makes Exactly sense. what Skinny said, on the head or on the side of the cheek. You know, kissing on his neck and shit or, no, you know, extra. That's some Joe Biden shit. It, right, exactly what it comes across <laughs> as. When I saw pictures, I was like, this is y'all's goat? <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> nah, <laughs> man. I hug all my kids still. Like even right. my, my youngest one's 12 and I still give him hugs. I mean, so. I kind of wish me and my dad had that, really, yes, but we but don't. I, didn't, never, we I didn't grow up doing that either. But right. say, yeah, but I always wanted it for my kids and shit because we didn't say I love you shit See, growing up, but I wanted it for my kids. So that's why it's heavy with me with my kids. Me and my dad have a weird, I mean, he's great, but it, there's a weird thing because he did adopt me. And so he never right. wanted to spank me. Mm-hmm. Because he felt weird about it. So, like, a couple of times he pretended to. He shut the door and hit the bed. He would, like, scream. And we would just, like, try to pretend for my mom. And then he never wanted to, like, overly be affectionate, I don't think. Like, physically. Right. Because he was my st- adopted dad. I mean, to me, he's my dad. But I think he always felt a weird thing. Right. And so, I never pushed See, it. See, I mm-hmm. always felt, like, really manly man. Like, for I want to be like that for my son. I'd be like this. But I'd say, oh, yeah, yeah, show your fucking emotions. You got to let that shit down. Right. So my son let me see me, like, sees me cry and shit and let me be emotional. Like, it's all right to show your feelings to be out there. And, like, but also, you can be a manly man and be like that way as well. So, yeah, we thought, like, it's a stereotype, like, in your headset as a parent. You got to break out of that shit. Makes sense. Makes mm-hmm. sense. All right, let's play some music. Let's go with it. <laughs> We're going to play another song from our homie Karma. <laughs> It was on the song earlier. Now, something I didn't mention on the song earlier, I think there's a better mix that's going to be on the streaming sites. Lokia sent me that one and said, I don't know if this is the final mix. Sort of. So, you know, we'll see where that's at. But uh, anyway, this song here by Karma Ooh, is girl. called 
lover. Love a lover. Forever. Karma. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, speaking to the soul right there. With mm. Lover. Mm, mm. Uh, love, and love that her. beat I did make, if you noticed. Oh, and yeah. she has a whole pack for me. She's trying to make a whole little EP with them. So I'm pretty excited mm. about it. Some more Hell yeah. Shit. I would dig that. Because every once I make shit, my man, this is definitely a karma beat. You know, it's a little more yeah. that upbeat, dancey <laughs> shit. So I'm like, I can't do this. I'm not happy enough. <laughs> yeah. So. Our girl Karma with the upbeat vibes, bring that goodness to the world. Oh yeah, the karma wave. Hell yeah! <laughs> you could be her lover by going and streaming her music, and, and she'll stream all over you, playing yourself. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then together, you, you and your ear, you and you. It's basically you're almost there. Uh, uh, Our man, uh, your ear uh, is like uh, romance, man. I'm telling yeah. you. Um, and the ear guys are waiting to happen. Yeah. The. Uh. I, hope, I, I imagine Skinny and, sounds just like that. That's exactly his noise. I bet Karma just shakes her head when we say. He's like, "Why do I send these people fucking music?" Uh, but you know, that's why we're here. Uh, we love you. You're our girl, Karma. You have the straight man alliance on your side. Uh, so congratulations. Right, what do you need me to identify as Karma? No, I'm just playing. Yeah, you're a he him. Uh, I have I the other day pronouns. I saw I don't know I've, I'm all for like a lot of the pronoun stuff you know not to get too far into it but when people are now like they just want their nickname to be their pronoun and I'm like well that's your nickname they're like like mine's bug 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 oh so shit bug and bug self and bug the, and I'm like well bug's a bug that's not a pronoun I don't know and now maybe I'm missing something here but I'm like I'm all actually fine with they and them right, right. and all that. Like, I mean, that doesn't bother right, me English is- at all to cause. Or if like someone identifies as a man or woman, I'll that doesn't at all. But when it's like, and you're gonna call me this other animal or something, I'm like, okay, well, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. 
You know, the gig's up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> again, maybe I'll be coming. That, that was a perfect saying for that right there, Goody. <laughs> Thank you. The maybe, gig is up. Maybe I'm becoming conservative, and I hate it because I hate conservatives. But man, I'm telling you, it's like I know how I grow. I was like, I don't know what I learned in English class. You want to read? I got to reprogram my shit. So I got to go back to school. Like, what the fuck? Hell no. Yeah, it's all interesting. I pass. <laughs> all right, next segment. One I just recently made because I knew. Me and Snappy both love cooking. And uh, Snappy, I'm going to ask you about something you cook. And then also, I know your Christmas, you were very proud of. So we'll, we'll go into that as well. So check out our cooking jingle. Jingle, jingle. I think of myself as a cook. And I would say I would want to shove my own duck in my own turkey. I use a roaster and I brine it overnight. I go hard in the motherfucking kitchen. Tell them, Billy. All right, so first, how'd your turducken go, Skinny, since it's in the official jingle? Well, I didn't make the turducken. I didn't even do it. I didn't even make I didn't cook anything on Christmas at all. <laughs> oh, you just teased us. Then. Oh, I know. Here's how it, it was a plan. I was all excited. <laughs> I got all worked up for it. Excuse me. But it didn't happen. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, at least we got that awesome little clip there. I know. It was great. But it's still in the plans, though, at some point. Hell yeah. <laughs> I know crawfish season is about to come back up, Skinny. We got to get a get us a, one of them cage of bulls on. Okay, then I'm down for Fuck it. Yeah, I, just, I keep saying it. I want to get nasty with it and get asshole elbows in it. <laughs> well, y'all just come back with the stories for the cooking segment. Um, so the first thing I asked Snappy is how you cooked Christmas dinner, and you were very so for a bunch of whole whole bunch of people, right? Yeah, we had like thirty people in a fifteen hundred square foot house. I meant. And everybody had just made their plate. I mean, it was, it was a little noisy because everybody's talking, you know, here and there and everywhere. Kids, everybody made their plate. Me and my wife was about to make her plate and silence went through all of that, the whole house. Like, my food was that fucking good on Christmas Day. Like, when I was doing the dressing, you know, usually you'll taste it be like, oh, it needs this, needs that. No. Once I taste it, like, it's over. It's done. And almost every dish went that way. And Hell like yeah. the turkey was just so juicy. And of course, I injected with Creole butter and all that good shit. Right. And fucking baked beans were on point, deviled eggs. I mean, all my wife's treats were great. Man, it was, it was <laughs> fucking eggs are expensive. It was too. It was like fucking Man, ten dollars a carton or some bullshit. That's what everyone keeps saying. Uh that they're real expensive. I when I had this whole vitamin deficiency thing, if y'all remember from season one, mm. uh I eventually have gotten that under control, but I switched to Eggland's Best, which is the most expensive eggs that there are, and because they're like guaranteed to have all these vitamins and shit, and they're still expensive. So I guess I was just used to them being expensive, and I'm like, I don't notice it. And then every time I just saw my parents, and they were like, it was ten dollars for eggs, and I go for a dozen, go for eighteen. Well, that's not a dozen, and I kept that like, well, that's not a dozen. Well, though. I was getting my wife on that too because I was like ten dollars. I was like, for how many? She's like the big one. I was like. You don't get a 12 pack. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's interesting. It's funny. But, yeah, everything's expensive. I mean, right. uh, so, you know, we're hoping y'all join the Patreon, but I understand if you don't. Totally get it because it's fucking life, man, and how the world is. Um, but, yeah, my other thing I'm going to ask you about, um, I see TikToks about these. I just don't understand the point necessarily is the lollipop drumsticks. Okay, well. What's the lollipop drumsticks about? <laughs> I seen it on some dude's restaurant, and then I seen it on a TikTok. And I thought they just looked cool. Basically, you cut the meat off the leg of the chicken. Right, like off the handle. The handle, and then you smush all that down into a ball. You can cut the tip off if you want, and that way it'll set a little flat or something. Circumcision, if you will. Sometimes I do, sometimes <laughs> I don't. Mm-hmm. It's basically so you have a handle looks like a lollipop. It's fucking for a fancy uh, delicacy dining. They're actually a pain in the goddamn ass to make. Right. It takes, well, it's like 30 to 45 minutes of prep work to try to get that fucking chicken handles <laughs> cut off and cleaned. That That's us weird. Like, is it worth it? I guess that's my question. My, my 12-year-old likes them and looks forward to them, so I got to say yes. All right. That's because it. I get asked to cook him and I know he's going to clear his plate and then he's going to go for leftovers the next two days. Right. I've like, gotten where he absolutely loves them. In this so. weird grocery world uh, where everything is expensive, drumsticks is one of the cheapest meals you can get. Yeah. And so I can get like the fucking 16 pack or whatever for real cheap. It'd be way easier. Just leave it on there, barbecue them, be done. Right. So what I, I do is I put them in the smoker 
uh, for like two hours and I just can barely fit the big pack on, you know, one grape, but I do it. And then I put barbecue sauce and mustard all over it. Uh, I've learned mustard's like the key in the smoker. It's weird. It's uh, then, the binder. It's right. the one that keeps your season stuck on. It's very good. So, uh, and I season them all up and it's, it works really well. It's like a little miniature smoked turkey legs, obviously, because they're chicken legs. And, uh, but I see you do it. It is interesting. It looks cool. I just, but I'm also like, well, it just seems like you have more of the, Ten, the tendon and the shit's probably somewhere wrapped up in there as well. The I, cut, so I cut a bunch of that. That's a lot in the prep part because you gotcha. can straight see them fucking hard tendons in there. And I just, right. I, I see them and cut them out. So, yeah, anyway, it's very interesting. Um, it's just a pretty fucking piece of chicken. Looks like a lot. It's real easy to eat. You got right. a nice clean handle. Yeah. I mean, it takes a little longer to cook because you got all your meat sandwiched in one spot now. Yeah, that's a good so, point. That's a good point. And you know, I don't put the either. sauce on until about the last fifteen minutes anymore. I'll season right. them, but then I make sure that chicken's good and cooked. Right. Well, what I'm talking about on our little cooking segment is what I'm cooking today. So y'all are both invited, of course, to eat. I'll let both y'all know. And that is chili. <laughs> now, I haven't made chili in quite some time. I used to make it often because my father in law would give me so much deer meat, but the last two years, I guess I, they don't like me anymore or something. And all I get is this fucking brought deer bratwurst, which I'm like, I, I mean, I would rather have anything else. I mean, I like bratwurst, but I'd rather make my own. I'd rather get my own raw bratwurst and smoke it instead of pre cooked stuff. So, uh, anyway, I <laughs> had this sausage from blue and gold sausage. Yeah, Koopy bought this sausage. fucking blue and gold sausage. So we had some left over. And then, so I just got this one. I did just beef and pork, you know, went classic with it. No deer in this one. Um, but it's very simple. You basically get a pound of two different meats or two pounds of the same one, but I prefer to switch. I like two different ones. I think it adds uh, a yeah, more character different. to your chili, if you will. And then also I know a lot of people argue over the beans. Now I'm not going to be a purist one way or the other. However, you like it is the way you should make it. However, I think as a dish, you should have beans. If like you're eating chili as the meal, there should be beans in it. If you're having chili on hot dogs or like oh, on okay, a baked yeah. potato, then yeah, it makes sense to not have beans, I think, you know, but I also wouldn't turn down beans in that chili. It just wouldn't bother me. But I also grew up in a household <laughs> where beans oh. was like a big fucking deal. You're right. right? Like everyone ate beans. beans over here. Yeah, so. Uh, beans go a long way. Well, we had beans and then we had chili. That was growing up. So. Right. That's why I like, two different meals, like I understand. But I personally use cannonelli beans. Now, those are white kidney beans, but they say on the fucking can cannonelli beans. So uh some about them is better in the fucking chili. I don't know what, but I'll saw on a recipe and I've used it ever since. Uh and then there is I put onion and garlic because you put that in everything for the most part. Rotel, which is a kind of a cheat code. Uh, tomato paste, which I think that can go either way because I've done it without tomato paste and it is still good. That's more of your liquidy, soupy chili. You go without tomato paste, but if you want it to be more bounded up, I think you go tomato paste in there. And uh, then there's in the, all this next shit is all in a little pack I buy, so I don't know the exact amounts, but I could look it up. Someone really needs to know. Um, and it's got red pepper, cumin, oregano, chili powder, onion powder, garlic powder, paprika, and then you add water, and then you basically, Damn, you know, that's man. your that's your whole shit. <laughs> now, the amount of red pepper you add basically determines how spicy it's going to be. And that's what it says on the kit. The kit, because I wrote this down here, is Wick Fowler's Two Alarm Chili Kit. Oh, okay. This is the best chili kit, in my opinion. Some people really like, uh, your brother let us know once, and I bought it, and it was the worst thing ever. Williams. Ever. Yeah, yeah, and that was my boss loves that. Williams, Williams is not spicy dog. And if you don't like spicy chili, maybe Williams is the way for you. Yeah. For me, I don't even love spicy food, but for my chili, I kind of want to eat it, and then yeah. my scalp gets just a little hot, mm. not super hot, but just a little bit. Yeah. And um, so I'll, this is always tough. I never go all red pepper. If you go all red pepper, that's the two alarm. They say half of it's one alarm, and then there's anything in between you. So you're just basically eyeballing it. Of what you want out of the red pepper. So I think I go half every time, but I could be off, you know. <laughs> and um, then you let it fucking cook all day in a crock pot. Or you could do a normal pot if you wanted to, of course. But I put it in a crock pot. And then I make corn muffins because that's the way I like to do it. So right the sweetness of oh, the good the sweet muffins. corn muffins yeah. with the spiciness of the chili. And oh, then balance. <laughs> at, when I eat it, I'm like, this is great. And then I think whenever it comes out, you're like, ooh, a little spicy. You know, but you don't worry about that till later. Right. I'm off work tomorrow. <laughs> I think we'll be okay. Yeah. So that's our cooking segment. 
<laughs> now yeah, we got to play but another song. Um, we're going to play a song from our homie, Mountain Man. Mountain Man. Uh, the Man of the Mountain from Alaska. Yeah. Uh, and this is actually a collab with our homie, Soko, Southern Comfort. Motherfucking Soko. Which I believe will be on the next episode. I'm not positive. We're still have to work it out, but I believe so. And um, the name of this song, I believe it's on Mountain Man's new EP, I believe you guys coming out, mm-hmm. is called Life. So um, let's check it out. Ooh, let's do it. All about life. Well, life's got me down Can't seem to find a fix to take away this frown I live in terror of the lights and the sounds I live in terror of a life above ground Please just leave me alone Somebody call the doctor, I'm succumbing to psychosis I got prescribed life but only take it in doses Get told every day but people think that they know shit Don't focus on the bullshit, keep an eye where I'm going I take it day by day, but it's easy for you to say This ain't a kid's show, don't know what I'm gonna do today Bills are due, rent is due, electricity, sewage It's ironic, really, cause it's really shit that I'm doing 9 to 5 on the daily with no time to just live I eat what I can, when I can, I cannot afford to give A second thought for my health, there's just way too much work to do Finally straightened up and learned not to be serving you I should be grateful that I'm stable, don't have to change my address And it's not a lack of effort, I am trying my best Whose bright idea was this? Well, it's anybody's guess, but the fact of the matter Matter is, my life is a mess. Well, life's got me down. Can't seem to find a fix to take away this frown. I live in terror of the lights and the sound. I live in terror of a life above ground. Please just leave me alone. This night I had a dream that I killed me and nobody missed me. I think the devil's gaining on me. I think the devil's gaining on me Last night I had a dream, more like a nightmare I tried to end it all, just to escape my fears This life is so unfair, I have so many worries Just when I start to breathe, I start to get buried I know the devil's real, I feel his breath on me I hear demonic tones saying I deserve to suffer They telling me I'm nothing, I might think that they right That's why I'm always on my own and staying out of sight But this is my life, I gotta take it back I struggled too long to see it all dissolve I pick myself up, get back to sunshine, repress the Thoughts until the next time. All the worries of my world bring my spirit down. All the worries of my world bring my spirit down. All the worries of my world bring my spirit down. Can't let the worries of my world bring my spirit well, down. Life's got me down. Can't seem to find a fix to take away this frown. I live in terror of the lights and the sound. I live in terror of a of ground please just leave me alone well life's got me down can't seem to find a fix to take away this frown i live in Mountain Man, you, 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 featuring Southern Comforts. Fire with life, with the life facts, and uh, we could imagine Brad Sirex being on a remix. Ooh, just sounds like a Brad Sirex. I like the live it has, so yeah, yeah, it's very, mm. very dun, cool. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Get it. <laughs> hey, y'all got for Snappy's now. Snapping yes. on. Ooh, we the snap mix. <laughs> Snapping on her arm, busting on her dog. 
Speaking of uh, you on a mic and Brad, I have I do have an idea for a segment for an episode, probably like the majority of one, mm. where I do want to get like you and Brad, like you interview Brad. Oh, shit. Like now I'll sit here because I'll have to record it, but you have on headphones and y'all can talk or whatever. And the way he would talk to me, Made but me I think nervous. y'all, I think y'all would need to have uh, more structure because. Uh-huh. No offense to either one of y'all. It will be hard to see y'all being the one that drives it. Y'all are definitely a little more reactionary. And so I think y'all would have to come with like five questions to ask the other one. Because he would ask you some stupid shit. And then you could ask uh, him some stupid shit. You know? So I think we got to have... And then if someone wants to have a skinny, you know, someday, we, we could do the same thing. Where we could have... I think we got to... So or weird. even if... Like CJ and Soko are working on a collab album. They could do it, but just me on the line recording Man, it. Watch yeah. out. We're going to get skinny over here and going to have the Bachelor podcast. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah the Bachelor podcast. <laughs> well, I'm, we're already trying to get him to jack off on camera. To what? Support all the, oh, dear God. Did you not remember the last... Like, for people that don't know, y'all go back and listen to the podcast <laughs> and the end of the year cast. Oh, ski, ski, ski. Both very good. I've done lots of compliments. I'm kind of out of it that way. <laughs> but um, we have a friend of the podcast, wish they would let me say who they are, mm-hmm. who has an inside to this. And, he was <laughs> like, and they keep hitting me up like, if Skinny's down, he can make money. <laughs> well, fuck yeah, I know I could. And so... <laughs> You know, we're trying to see how we can support the podcast with his jacking off. So, you're going to jack off anyway, you know? Yeah. Right. So I'm going to get paid for it. Right. I mean, it's you're at the blood. Why not donate? Yeah, I know if it was still water, we could just go down, go down to the local, ba- local sperm bank or, right. you know. Hell yeah. yeah. You got plasma where they pay you for plasma around here. Oh, you need to donate that stuff. Well, fucking other towns are getting paid. Yeah, I agree. I know, right? That's fucking bullshit. I don't fucking give me a guilt trip. I know. I agree. I agree. All right. Our, uh, I think last little segment that we're playing, I made a little video game one because somebody at this table started playing video games recently yeah. so that we could be on the video game segment. <laughs> so let's check it out. Cheeky cheek. You see me play. You see me play, don't you? You see me give everything I got, right? We talking about games. I'm a pretty big fan of that one. That's one of my favorites. Uh, Spieler know that is AI talking about games. Mm-hmm. And then um, the first part is JP from Grandma's Boy, where his robot choo, choo, noises. <laughs> so anyway. Okay. Uh, just going to say it now so people know. Um, yeah, Skinny started playing video games, he said. And I believe he yeah. started playing Mafia 3, which yeah. we brought up on the end of the year cast. Yeah, I remember that one. That one, so... Uh, How's that going, Skinny? I mean, it's going great. I mean, it keep me up late at night, like shit, like like the, like this morning, fucking up to three o'clock, go sleep. <laughs> so up there's a fucking you planet. You say, I'm gonna get this one like, task knocked out and it gives you nine more tasks. I know. I was like, it's just like a game's like a hit and miss thing for me. Like, oh no, I'm gonna be over here not doing things. Like, okay, let me play with it. <laughs> right. Man, they're fun as fuck, though. I was like, I see how people get lost into them and shit. And I was like, man, I'm hungry, but I don't want to eat. I need something fast so I can eat. Like, what's some good munching food? to eat with while I'm banging this game out try to eat some cereal real fast like uh, yeah uh, or some I love shit. Some cereal for sure I was like man what's good gaming food <laughs> chili you gotta get your chili, chili. <laughs> chili. 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 Like, shit. Uh, yeah Mafia 3 me and Snappy have both beat uh, we're both very big fans of it I need to come over sometime because you have my PS4 and I log in I can download all the games I have mm. that we have room for but it's only yeah, so much like, room yeah I have the deletes and shit like man I gotta make room because I got so many updates and shit it's like oh, right I gotta, so I, I would say we need to delete everything you don't think you'll play and then we I'm can download that. some I can well if I log as me I can go download some new shit if you know Bro. you want to try some new games like I know I try to make you play Hades because I loved it but I was like I don't know it's in a skinny game but we're no, gonna make him try I this shit it. <laughs> uh, but it's a small you know it didn't take a much room um so my gaming shit, two things real quick. Cause at the end of the year, cats talked about all the games I played that I liked. I have played two more games I think are worthy of a mention here at the end of the year or before the year ended. One was mass effect one, which is an old ass fucking game, but they uh, gave away the trilogy on a monthly thing. And um, I platinumed it, which was good because I'd only played them one of their game last year. And I just felt like a failure. PlayStation gave you this end of the year wrap up of like, 
here's how many games you played. Here's how many hours you're in the whatever percentage of people. And then here's your trophies. And I'm, I usually pride myself in my platinum trophies. I'd only gotten one. And I was like, Oh my God, I'm a fucking loser. I'm falling off. I'm not <laughs> skilled as a gamer anymore. I can't even play oh, these fucking shit, multiplayer games. Down. I only played three hours online all year. And so I was like out of, I like 900 hours offline and three hours online gaming, which I was like, Oh shit, that's crazy. Um, so anyway, I played on Mass Effect 1. It was only an 18 and a half hour game. So that was pretty cool. Because we're my complaint, since Red Dead Redemption 2, which is when season one of this podcast started, it was, it was just too long. And almost every game, if we go back to season one of it, I'm like, I'm excited about this game. My complaint every time is like, it's too much. It's just too long. Why are games this long? I don't get it. Because uh, like the last half is just so fucking repetitive. Um so it was nice to play an old game that was short. Now I went on a Mass Effect two because your save carries over, and that's like the whole appeal of the game mm-hmm. is the third, through the three games. And immediately I'm like, I don't like two. It's too sleek. It's too stylized. I like the old ass shitty <laughs> Mass Effect one. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to get used to it. And I just need to find. Uh, I've already bought this fucking Hogwarts Legacy game for Koopy. It's gonna be a game. This isn't the first time in our relationship this is gonna happen because she doesn't care about video games really where she's going to be watching me basically play a game because she wants to care about the story. Like it's Harry Potter, which she loves. I don't give a fuck about Harry Potter. Oh, but we shit. went, we saw this <laughs> gameplay video cause she wanted to give it a shot, I went to the Harry but we Potter watched a, <laughs> we watched this gameplay video and it looks about like any other action game. I mean, you're like, put up your shield, but it's a spell, yeah. you know? And then you're like, wand, you're a sword, but it's all the same buttons, mm-hmm. you know, that you play an action game. And I'm like, I don't think, and she, I didn't want to say, I didn't think she could do it. So I just showed her the video, but then at the end she was like, I don't know if I can do that. And I was like, ah, well, I'll play it for you if we have to. So anyway, I've already bought it, already right. paid for it uh, before I That's had to think sweet. about it. It comes out <laughs> in February. Um, so that'll be in this video game Fucking thing in the Harry future, Potter, of course. I got in that in a really shit um, and then I saw one video of some when Christmas videos were going around and I have to agree with this uh, little kid. It was a little black kid and a lot of people were calling him ungrateful or whatever. And I think I would agree if it was in our age, but also I guess I'm biased because I, you know, I'll explain. Kid gets an Xbox and mm-hmm. he's pissed because it's on a PlayStation and he storms off crying to his room. And then most people are like, you better just be thankful you got anything or whatever. Right. right? And now if that kid never had any other video games before, I agree. He should just be thankful he has a video game thing. Right. Mm-hmm. But if he had a PS4 for the last however many years, buying games in the cloud, you know, he had a whole game library. Okay. And then you get him an Xbox. That is, f- I mean, like, I understand how that kid feels. Now, this wouldn't have been a thing when we were kids, right? Because it didn't matter. You couldn't have already, your <laughs> Nintendo, regular Nintendo games didn't work in the Super Nintendo or Sega, either one, so it didn't matter. But, like, I understand in this generation how that could be like a, are you fucking serious moment? I just do. Now, I think even the other way, if you owned a bunch of Xbox games Mm -hmm. and then you won the new Xbox and someone got you a PlayStation because they're like, I heard people like these more. You'd be like, motherfucker, I own all the Xbox games. That becomes a problem where people don't listen to what you fucking say. What would you like? You tell them exactly what it is and they venture off on their own and get a like item. That ain't what I fucking asked for. I would just rather you not get me nothing. Yeah, exactly. Either get me what exactly what I asked for, don't fucking do it. Right. So it was wasting an, money on these dollar general items I don't want. It was interesting <laughs> where I would like disagree with most adults in this thing. I'm like, y'all just don't get it. Y'all don't play right. games. Y'all don't understand, you, you know, see. some of these issues could be here. <laughs> there you go. Uh but yeah, anyway. It's one of the problems that could have been prevented if the parents just had a listen. But there was twice in my life I Man, got what you can't be doing. <laughs> the wrong console, quote unquote. Like, even with like with hindsight and everything, knowing like so when I got a Sega, I know now I got it because it was ninety nine ninety nine. Right. So it was a hundred bucks. My mom was like, Yeah, you get a Sega. And it was the one that came with the fucking fighting game, the whatever academy or some shit. It didn't even come with Sonic, it came with some fucking other shit. And it I didn't really enjoy my Sega. I played it and I had all the I bought all the games at flea markets and shit like that. But I never I can't tell you one game on the Sega that I loved. I just had it and was like, yeah, I guess I have this. But Rusty had a Super Nintendo and everything was awesome. Whereas it was like, if they would have just gotten me that, I would have like had so much more fun. Well, you know? yeah, I was kind of like you. That was the 149 option and we had the Sega option at 99. <laughs> exactly. So we got Sega. Exactly. 
And then the same thing happened when Super Nintendo dropped, except that maybe Super Nintendo, might, or I'm sorry, Nintendo 64, it might have been more expensive than a PS1 originally. But either way, I was like, all right, I fucked up last time. We're getting a Nintendo this time. And my mom got me a Nintendo 64 for Christmas. And I was pumped. Don't get me wrong. But then with hindsight and seeing all the games that came out, there was like three games I even liked on the N64. And then this PlayStation has like, Th- I know. It's, it's like, <laughs> you know. okay, we get to Sega. They made us skip all the PlayStation 1 and 2 years, and then they get us to 64 while the PlayStation 2 has been badass for years. You know, it was just like they're, our parents were behind on getting us. Right. Now, by the time I got the PS2, I mean, I was, I got that. It was cool, you know, or whatever. And I got a PS1 eventually. I was like, I'll, I'll just sell the 64. So eventually I did. I just sold it, got a PS1, you know, back when I could take it in my own hands. I was mowing <laughs> lawns and shit. Um, and then by the time, and then by college shit was right when the PS3 and 360 came out and I shouldn't have money like that, you know? And so I was like, fuck it. I'm playing PS2 and X original Xbox forever. And I just kind of lugged both those old ass consoles around and then really enjoyed it. But then when the PS4 came out since that day, cause I got on launch day, I've been like a elite gamer. Like I like snobbish, right? I buy, I play like all the newest shit, and I have to have all the newest shit. And if people don't know about the shit, then you're just a fucking idiot because you don't know. Like I have a, I have like an an, uh, an elitist attitude about Hell it. Hell yeah, fuck it. That's I don't mean to, but because I listen to pod, kind of like y'all football. You know, if you like really get into football and you're right. watching all the show, you're like, I know more about this than you, right. fucker. I watched shit. all the shit. I'm gonna skip Bayless with this motherfucker. Uh, skip Bayless don't know shit. <laughs> well, when, well, even like Stephen A. Like, when would they even have time to watch sports? They're on TV like 12 hours a day. Right. You know, when could they even do it? Uh, speaking of sports, I have I now have access to sports channels again. So that was a big Christmas get for me. Um, got the in laws being like, oh, here's our Cox cable login, and I was like. Oh, this is gonna be great. So yeah, I might yeah. know a little more about everyone up in city and stuff rave about Cox Cable, but we're monopolized in Ada, Oklahoma. We can right. only have Sparklight. <laughs> well, there I don't. I had to help one of the in laws with some stuff. They're trying to switch people off of cable lines to internet TV, and I I started. I was like, this is horrible. I was like, because you. If you turn off the TV, it just still was playing in the background using your internet. And I'm like, I don't think y'all get what's happening. <laughs> like, yeah. So anyway, we'll see. All right. We have a, one more song here. And it's actually a song off of my new album okay. that has already come out Ooh, last week out. called Different. Is it? And this is a collab with my homie CJ Jones. Cheers. Probably. Jones. Uh, on the sadder side you're more chill or i don't know something so like that sad. so anyway it's called somewhere featuring cj jones by me a to the mo check it out grab the tissues somewhere anywhere somewhere out there there's a place for me there's a place for me there's a place for me Somewhere out there There's a place for me There's a place for me There's a place for me Somewhere out there There's a place for me There's a place for me There's a place for me I feel I'm wanted and I wanna give up my life is crunching, I'm just trying to sit up I'm nothing, I mean it's nothing Spark something, I swear I feel better after I'm fucking My mind's lost, I don't even need to find it Only find flaws, so I decided I should hide it It's all a sign, gosh, I tried but can't define it I gotta sign off, we divided it like the way they designed it Help me, pills please, I felt free, chill freeze Trying to eat some fruit, point me to which tree I hear you do, but it's a mystery Johnny drama victory, the systems are contradictory I give it my all until they sick of me Just go ahead and bury me if y'all ain't digging me Who would marry me, don't believe that my wife is even into me Question if depression is just fucking killing me Somewhere out there There's a place for me There's a place for me There's a place for me Somewhere out there there's a place for me. There's a place for me. There's a place for me. Somewhere out there. There's a place for me. 
There's a place for me. There's a place for me. Yo, I'm steady on my own, finding somewhere to call a home All this time inside my head, I've been wishing I belong Longing for something real, but steady spinning on this wheel Like a hamster, I stay running, but can't jump up off this treadmill It's a challenge, needing to find my balance I'm needing to face reality, needing some kind of clarity Need some peace of mind as I'm weaving into insanity I'm fucking tired, really needing some kind of energy Yeah, I just need an escape I think I need to find a way to relay I stay busy on these tracks, I'm steady making these tapes Hoping that someday I can pave a way to break for my chains All this time that I wasted Wishing I could be somebody else I sit alone when the day is Looking for a place somewhere that I can free myself Somewhere out there There's a place for me There's a place for me There's a place for me Somewhere out there There's a place for me There's a place for me There's a place for me Uh, somewhere so, Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah Oh, uh, CJ Jones. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. A to the mo. A to the fuck mo. Uh, it's been a long time since I recorded it, and so I am like slightly embarrassed because I can't fucking sing, and I'm like, here, listen to me not be able to sing well. Man, this is dope. Like, I heard it so many times. It's just like, I know the song. It's like, yeah, it's a dope ass song. Like, yeah. But it's because <laughs> when you create stuff, you are biased. There is still a part of me that I'm like, but I'm not seeing it in a way in which it works. You know, like I'm like lying. I'm like telling myself like it isn't good, but like it works in this way of like and, and you it's can true, feel though. it. You can like feel it in the and then I put CJ who can really sing as like backing vocals to like <laughs> show off. Like, well, that's how you would actually do it if you really sing well. So, but I think my verse is good. I do think yeah, I do like my verse. It's, it's a dope collab, man. And so it's all sort of those you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> um, so anyway, check out my album, different um, out in the out in the world. All kind of thing. right, motherfucker. It's doing poorly if I had to guess because I accidentally uploaded it incorrectly and it came <laughs> out last year and then it came out this year. You know, it was a whole thing. So, uh, anyway, check that shit out. All right, we're here at the end. Uh, the only thing last on my list here is, is Skinny, how's your court shit going? You know, last we talked to you, you'd gotten pulled oh, over yeah. and they were trying to fucking get you for fucking speeding even though you weren't and then they got to try to get you for a DUI even though you were smoking weed and you wouldn't do a breath right. fly. It was a whole thing. Go listen to uh, End of the Year Cast well, or the podcast. Yeah, we went back to court and my lawyers like there's like when she's like in there she said we want to get it for another trial so they extended out to like um uh, See here, in part like April. I think it's today extended out to April. Right. But my lawyer is like, I'm going to pin him, pin him down because there's too many holes in the stories I went. There's no fog line, and they say you're going like a 45 and a, and a 35, but on that road it's a 45. So she's like, I'm gonna take some pictures. She said I'm just gonna pin them down. So it's like there's a lot of holes in her story. So that's where we're at right now. I ain't Hell going yeah. to prison or nothing. I'm going to jail. So I'm just trying to get it all dismissed. And she well, says, "So we're gonna have free skinny shirts in the merch shop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, free skinny it. for his OnlyFans. Yeah. <laughs> right. You want him to jack off or not? <laughs> well, he's that That's true. They all got phones now. I think. Uh, yeah, they do. Like shit. Like, I, when, I, when I was in there, I had my phone and shit, just up in there, just using the phone and shit. Yeah, I heard so making videos. He might be able to call in. I guess but, yeah, there might be a chance. <laughs> yeah, let's look at the Ryan. Know out. Well, this take- podcast and receive a quick call from uh, <laughs> What's up, yeah. Talk County. <laughs> Hell yeah! Hey, shoot, um, oh, don't pass that wire. <laughs> and then uh, you know, just to recap here on our secret show, we're gonna try to get maybe in a week, two weeks, if I'm gonna do it, maybe in two weeks, uh, we'll get together and do we'll a secret show. I'm gonna try to come up with my top five most embarrassing sexual moments. Uh, I've talked about most of them already, Ooh. so it shouldn't be that hard. I don't think. Um, <laughs> And then if y'all have any, of course, you can share anything that you would think like, I probably wouldn't share this on a normal one because anyone could hear it. But this one is like the real fans. You know, <laughs> if you could just anything like that, you know, we'll ask any like who, how many times have you cucked someone? How many times have you been the man who cucked the man? Uh, we'll just get a number yeah. I and mean, we'll see how far he wants to go into it. But uh, 
I, I could see it being a whole thing. Oh, and then yeah. also, Brad, if you're hearing this, maybe get you and Snappy. Y'all work out. Y'all uh, interviewing each other in the future. It could be a fun time. Um, and we got a few people. We got Soko calling in. I got Ron, the homie Ron, uh, Ron. trying to come over, do a podcast sometime in season two. So we That's c- what's can up. still do call-ins, of course, with people. Um, we just want you to record on your computer as well, if you can, for that crisp audio quality we're known Ooh. for around here. Like a crispy cream um, donut. And then also at the end, we're ending here. We usually just end with a beat. Mm. But now I'm put so much more work into it for no reason that people are probably already going to just turn off after this. But <laughs> I'm doing like a whole how I made the beat mm. and then the beat. Um, and then some of them are real songs. So if y'all care <laughs> about that, stick around for that. Um, it's like an extra 10 minutes of your time. And of course, you don't have to. I don't give a fuck. Um, and then we're on anchor now. Uh, mm-hmm. so that's our, where we live at, where we the host man. it, but it is also still on the Apple. This should be the same feed that you got your Apple podcast before. And, uh, we're on Spotify. They try to change the feed up to a different one. I think I even got our old one back on track, but we have two different ones on Spotify now for some fucking reason. <laughs> and, um, Doing big things. Uh, What's the other big one, I guess? Um, oh, I guess those are the three major ones. And then I know Soka listens on Google Podcasts, so I guess we're on that. Um, but we're not on Stitcher anymore. So if you're on a Stitcher list, you're probably never going to hear this again. But I can't log in. It was made with the old powwow fucking email address. And I'm like, I don't remember any of that shit. So I can't <laughs> log in. Um, we have been already qualified for Anchor Ads, but we qualified like over a month ago. And they still haven't, they're like, we're still trying to find something that matches your podcast. So maybe they don't have the dick pills available for us or whatever. Bluetooth, I do Bluetooth um, commercials. Look at that Bluetooth. <laughs> I, I, I we read that. So, <laughs> Bluetooth or the man hammocks. Uh, so I know, again, I, I hate right. like begging people, like, if you like this, let people know. It would be great to get our podcast uh, off going here at the beginning of the new season. Right. Because it's just really a reinvention of the podcast. And it's we're going to see how back it goes. Brand new inventions. I got a lot of comments on episode 400, the podcast, and the end of the year cast that, that whatever y'all are doing there is works that's the best y'all have done thanks so, guys so sweet well, bad space what we're trying to do but i made dumb jingles <laughs> so hopefully all together jingle jingle motherfucker um, in the season anyway i think that's all we got check out this beat and i uh, appreciate y'all uh coming over thanks right. for having us peace peace All right, here at another beat tutorial brought to you by Eight of the Mo. Uh, this first, this one I'm gonna play here is uh, actually the first beat that I made with my uh, sustain pedal. So, people that don't know, uh, a lot of people when they make beats digitally, they buy a MIDI keyboard, which I purchase honestly for anyone curious. I don't think they're worth it. Most people do not use them enough. Honestly, I mean, especially if you started without one, you're probably like, you already probably got your other shit down. But every once in a while, I do play it. And uh, the problem is I don't, I can't actually play the piano. So uh, I've gotten Melodics, which is uh, this app you could download on your computer. It's like a Guitar Hero, but with a mini keyboard. You have to pay money to do a membership, or you can just do five free minutes a day, which is what I do. So I do that to kind of get the fingers loosened up, but I don't quite understand. Um, so anyway, I got a sustain pedal to go with my MIDI keyboard. That's uh, if you've seen a real piano, that's those little steps at the bottom that you you hold that and that holds the notes that you played as you're resetting your hands to you know a different place. I think, and again, I'm no expert. That's just my understanding. So. When I got this sustain pedal, I was like, let's fucking do it. And I actually played what you're about to hear. Um, I do think, even though I don't know how to play the piano, I've learned enough little tricks. And then, like, for instance, if I just stick all on the white keys, that's going to be in C major or A minor. So you can just do that and be like, yeah, it's all in A minor. And I find I have a way of, it always sounds emotional or, like, sad. So I don't know if that's, like, from me or if that's just how anyone knew it sounds. So anyway, let's hear what I made.
All right, so that's the melody. Uh, like I said, I did just kind of play that, um, messing around. I will say it probably wasn't that good when I first played it. I'm sure I quantized it or did something to kind of put it a little on the grid, kind of work better. I just can't imagine I played something because, in my opinion, that's that good. Um, maybe people are listening. They're like, that shit fucking sucks. Um, but I was feeling it, um, had to make, you know, keep going with it. So the first thing I do is I just lay a real simple kick and snare, you know, um, the snare lately, kind of what I do is I always go very consistent on the snare. So this beat, um, you know, it's kind of has more of a boom bap you feel. I'm not even sure what the BPM or any of that shit is of this, but, um, you know, I'm gonna go with a very consistent snare on this, but you could go something a little off kilter. You know, a lot of people do like that, but I went to just simple kick and snare. So let's check out uh, what that sounds like here. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it all fits pretty well, you know, very simple, of course, but I think a lot of producers, and I'm not trying to talk like I'm a good one or successful or anything, but I just think a lot of producers can get worried about making shit a little too complicated. So I think with this one, I took definitely a more simple approach. Uh, so for instance, what I had next here is just a simple two-step hi-hat. When you hear it, you'll know what that is. If you're in music at all, it's just a, t -t 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 -t, you know, very consistent, but every other one's like, a slightly less velocity or volume and it kind of gives it that that very classic feel that um you know i'm sure you've all heard before um and then on the second half of it i added another extra little hi-hat noise you'll hear uh just to kind of switch it up and then i added this reverse crash so a reverse crash kind of gives like a little mini riser effect like a sort of noise and uh Normally, you kind of do that, in my opinion, to kind of it builds anticipation or like some urgency into it. It kind of makes it feel more anxious. Uh, and, and maybe that's just me. But anyway, let's let's check it out. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I think that's great verse. I mean, that's where I fucking ended it. So, um, you know, I think anyone could rap to that. That's I'm trying to go for that classic, uh, boom bap style. You know, I think that's it. Um, and then the last thing I added here was a bass. Um, you know, bass is typically the first thing I add after a melody or the very last thing. Cause I forgot that I didn't add a bass. Now there are some arguments I see online where some people, they don't want a kick instead they want a bass in that place or they don't want a bass they want to kick you know vibes well however you know a lot of people some people for some reason it is dying off where you use both now i guess i'm just going to be old school i like both you know i like having both in there so um on this i just laid a real simple uh like bass guitar kind of bass over the notes uh and or over the notes of the melody it's the you know the kind of plays just exactly with the melody um it's very subtle you know i would say even if depending on what speakers you're listening to this on you may not even hear a difference you know maybe just too low um but i think it definitely adds some presence All right, so there's that. I think the, it this would normally be done. I could see me just uploading all this as is. Uh, I did add one more thing at the end where, uh, to me, I'm not, I don't guess I'm very good at drops, you know, or whatever you call it, like where that little melody plays, then all of a sudden, like, the beat hits and drops. For some reason, that's not 
something I, I'm real good at. I mean, I'm working on it, of course. So one thing I do is you sometimes will do like automate some volume down or something like that. Uh, and then it comes back up. But what I did here is I actually just took like a little snare roll. Um, and so I took instead of some drum kit, you know, drum pack or whatever that I fucking downloaded. So I took a part of a section of a loop and just added like a little drum roll right before it goes into the verse. So it kind of gets you ready. Um, you know, it adds some variety because it's different from your other drums that you have on the on the track. And I think it, it's, it, it works well. You know, this is something I do. I do a lot of snare rolls and stuff for um, for Brad Sirax beats because I know he likes them. So you just got to remember little things like that. So anyway, added this. Check it out. So anyway, I think that really ties it together, uh, especially when you'll hear the full beat, you know, when it goes like the little hook area and then back in the second verse, you know, I think it was definitely needed, definitely needed in the beat. Um, but I think it all comes together nicely. So for anyone curious, this beat at the moment is in my store, unless it's already been s sold because of this awesome pitch. Uh, it's called Sustained, named after my sustained pedal that I used to make it. Um, so go look for it there at a to the mode dot beat stars dot com. If you're curious or just go listen to any of the beats, I think even the listens like help me in their algorithm charts or some shit. Maybe I don't I'm not positive, um, but I really need to sell some fucking beats. So anyway, uh, I'm going to play the whole beat here. But if you're interested, like I said, it is for lease or you can buy it exclusively. Um, all of that. Maybe I should make some like promo code sell for the podcast list. I don't know. I'll think about it, but they're pretty fucking cheap. So just uh, go check it out. And thanks for listening. Air the, the Mo makes beats. <laughs>